This is Sports Stuff. Bing, 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 bing. Betting Stuff. The chow. This is Sports Stuff Betting Stuff, the number one sports betting podcast coming out of the Sports Stuff with Jim and Muff Enterprise. I am your host, the original degenerate, Muff, <gasps> joined alongside the Ohio Homer. The Ohio Degenerate, the capo of the Midwest Crack House, which is now in season, Jim. Hello. Also with us, as usual, is the medical degenerate, the guru of all things, including the Gumbies, and the cuts, and the bruises, and the scratches, and administering all of the correct medications, which include Tussin and Dirt, Alex. That's me. So Tussin and Dirt, you're just going to go with it? I was going to, actually, I was trying to show, like, a poking of the lung for Jim. And then I oh, went, like, okay. for some reason, my gesture, which I know Muff probably not watching me right now, but it was like this, like, where you put your finger through the O on your other hand, like, fiddling. And I did it, okay. and I was trying to hide that I did it, and I was like, yep. <laughs> we really need to get Muff to, like, be able to work. <laughs> And see us. I think it's I better think, that I don't sometimes. I was going to say, sometimes I think it's best that he can't. <laughs> it and then, and then if I do watch like later, if I watch it as it uploads to YouTube, or you know, I hear you guys giggle at some point, and I don't, and I can't <laughs> look at it while we're stamp. recording. Yeah, I'm like, okay, let's go back and see what just happened here. Or something <laughs> like Alex just said, I will be like, oh, I'm going to watch this later. That's fair. That's fair. All right. This is... The betting show, and to introduce any new listeners, uh, we all have our favorite good luck charms, our totems, our tokens of good luck, and they are for Alex. This is my boonies hat because I'm getting down in the trenches and deflecting all the bad bets. Jim has the Kraken hat. Um, it's getting close to that retirement phase, though. Like <laughs> one one game into the NHL season. <laughs> It's just my bets are starting to to fade, so I need it needs to spark its life back into itself. I can say that much. Okay, and I have my super sweet blender sunglasses. I was making these cool before Dion was even thinking about them. I'm the right. story I'm going to go with. I mean, you're not wrong. You were making them cool. Oh, at least to the select group of people that were listening at that point. Yeah, I guess more so watching than listening, but <clears throat> all right. So my question uh, is, yeah. would you get a pair of his? No, because they're probably way overpriced right now. They're not. They're like forty five of the fifty bucks. Wow, these are more expensive than those. I know. Does that mean mine are cooler? That was, that's when they had the pit viper trend, so I knew that you paid more for those. But these aren't as expensive as pit as pit vipers, though. Right, but they still were probably comparable. Yes, pit vipers are like twenty or thirty dollars more than this when I bought them because that was an option as well. And I was like, eh, these are going to do the same thing for me. Yeah. All right. So how this works is we will go over our best bets from last week. We'll do an update on where we stand uh, against each other. There was a little bit of controversy as we got into this, but we'll get into that when we get to that time. We'll go over our special picks from last week, which it's good. It's good week, boys. It's I'm not mad week. about it. Not mad about it. Good week on the special week pick. And then we'll get into this week's NFL slate and the college football games of note. As a reminder, FanDuel is our exclusive betting app. You can. FanDuel. 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 There's still time to sponsor us, FanDuel. 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 Clean hand, FanDuel. If you're a listener of the betting show, tag the show. Hashtag FanDuel. I'll give you five bucks. There you go. That's a way to make an easy five dollars. The only thing easier than those five dollars is the five, ten, twenty, fifty, a hundred dollars that you can make by tailing our best bets. And you can follow them on the action app. You can first one. Me. I'm not gonna do a doll for everybody, just the first one that does. And he realized how much money yeah, that so, well, gonna be broke. <laughs> well, well, no, Jim, here's what you can do. Yeah, let's let's do a random drawing. I will put forth five dollars. Okay. Alex, you gonna match? 
I will I will match your five dollars. We will randomly choose three people that yeah. share, comment, and use the hashtag Vandal. Vandal. Yes, Vandal. Hashtag Vandal. Bingo. And again, you can follow us on the Action app. Follow me at C McPherson20. I'm at the real medical degenerate. I had to have not logged about yet this year, but you never know when they're coming. <laughs> Jim. 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 What? <laughs> I missed it. I'm sorry. <laughs> Jim is at Bucketville Butcher. Sorry. On the action. Kid app. things. Kid things. I apologize. <laughs> if you want to follow Jim on the action app at Bucketville Butcher, uh, <laughs> you can see our bets, the lines, the odds we got them at. And um, in so much as we have all of our bets in, <clears throat> Alex, uh, you can see our units up and down for the week, month, and year, as well as see what we're doing in specific sports. Well, gents, uh, let's jump into last week's recap. But a real quick note, uh, just so we know, like we've been overall doing well as a show, mm-hmm. right, on the whole. I think that trend did not – we stayed status quo as a show this week, right? <laughs> I was okay with my week. No, as a show. If we're looking oh, okay. at total gotcha. total wins, total losses as a show. Okay. Um, but I heard a stat today that at least in the NFL, the public is something like 45 and 20. So if you take like all of the public money on each yeah. game, who had what, where the most money was. Yeah. The NFL is paying out. Paying out to the people. Good. So that's a positive thing for the world. Um, All right. So last week's recap, we're going to start with the best record for the week. Alex. That's me. I came in at a five and three record for the week. I'll start with my losses. I lost the Thursday night game. The commanders were not great and did not cover five and a half against the bears. That was the Dick Buckus game. Yeah, yeah, that killed me. As soon as Dick Buck has passed, rest in peace. I know I was done for there. Washington State plus three and a half at UCLA did not cover. And the Jags Bills over 48 and a half did not hit. They were like 45, I believe. So those are my losses. My wins were the Oklahoma Texas over 60 and a half. Kansas minus one and a half for Central Florida. Oregon State minus nine and a half at Cal. The Colts plus one and a half versus the Titans. And the Jets plus one and a half at the Broncos. All right, that, that puts Alex's money. overall record to 24, 14, and 1 with a winning percentage of 615. This was the area that we had some argument over. Um, we had a long discussion a- about winning percentages. If you look at our not losing percentages, I'm technically ahead of Muff, but we are going by winning percentages after we discussed it, and I'm in six, 615. And if you it's notice, there's a 1. There'll be a 1 at the end of Alex's and Jim's record because I uh, – kowtowed to their request their pleading and or their general uh upsetness of me saying that last week was a loss and not a push so they get the push they got yeah we got the push but we have to use winning percentage not not losing percentage bingo jim i'm happy yep jim i am i went four and three my losses i lost that texas game Texas minus six and a half to Oklahoma. I lost the over following Muff, uh, the 59 and a half in the UNC Syracuse game. Really shocked about that. I lost the Jags Bills game. Bills minus five and a half. Uh, My winners, I won the Oregon State minus nine and a half to Cal. Uh, I won the Colts plus one and a half to the Titans. Won the Jets plus one and a half to the Broncos. And won the 49ers minus three and a half to the Cowboys. Yeah. Which puts Jim's overall record at 19, 18, and one at a 500 winning percentage. I don't care about winning percentage. What I focus on, 19, 18, and one. Okay. So your record, which is a reflection of your winning percentage, is what you focus on. I don't care about that winning percentage. Okay. All right. And I last this week, I went two and four, bringing my overall record to 22 and 13 for a 629 winning percentage, uh, which is tops for the moment. I lost the 
Texas covering six and a half, hosting Oklahoma. I lost Syracuse UNC over 59 and a half. I lost Jags Bills, Bills to cover five and a half. I lost the Rams plus the points, hosting the Eagles. I won Oregon State to cover, hosting or going to Cal and the 49ers to win, hosting the boys. So those are our best bets from last week, getting us into the special picks. First, the Mike All Stop Hit Stick Pick of the Week. Is a win, bringing the record to three and three for the season as Oregon State covers nine and a half at visiting Cal. It's a new season. Back to 500. Time to get on board. And in just an absolute fantastic start, the Midwest Mobster Risky Pick of the Week. Get out of here. Is a winner again, bringing it to five and one as the Moneyline Dog Colts hosting the Titans get the win. Thank you, Gardner Minshew. I it's wild to me that that our riskiest pick is our our winning pick. Uh, you know it's not the winningest pick. The Lolita Whale of a Parlay. Oh. Is a loser is a loser this week, and I am the reason that it lost. As my leg, Syracuse UNC over 59 and a half is the lone L in the parlay, which means I have been banished. I am kicked out of the parlay this week. As Alex's Kansas to cover one and a half hosting Central Florida is a win. Jim's 49ers to cover three and a half hosting the Cowboys was a win and the hit stick pick, which was Oregon state to cover nine and a half at Cal was a win. I have been knocked out for the week. So, and I'm not saying this year at all as we're almost, you know, halfway, but should we not readjust the naming of these things to maybe, you know, a mid tier, a money dog esque name for the risky pick, and then throw the risky name to the parlay. No, okay, because then we're going to further confuse you about what it means to be a risky pick. Yeah, uh, yeah, okay. You already don't understand what a money line dog is. How are we then going to say that the risky pick is the favorite, the one that we like most to win, and the more confident pick is the money line dog which is the worst odds to win how are we gonna how are we gonna explain that to you Uh, you're right i think it would help me actually i don't think it's gonna help you at all it's It's only gonna help you part that bothers me it's going to further what throws me off it's gonna further confuse you so if we ever go back to it you're gonna be even more confused i don't think so Right, it's not going to confuse you because you get it wrong anyway. I get it. It's going to align with your thoughts. I think the risky parts what confuses me. I still don't understand why you can't get understand that a money line dog is a risky, is a risky pick. pick. It doesn't feel risky to me. Only because it's winning. That does not mean by the odds it's not. Sure. It's the team that's projected to lose to him, Jim. I know, and that makes sense to me. I'm with you. That means it's risky. All right, can we move on to this week's slate? Sorry, Alex. We're going to get down such a rabbit hole, Jim, in trying to make him figure this out. And it's been three years. Week six or week seven? I'm tired, Grandpa. Is it week six or week seven in the NFL? I don't know. Six, I think. Okay, NFL week six, starting with Thursday Night Football. Football happening today as the Broncos travel to Kansas City to take on the Chiefs. Chiefs favored by 10.5, over under 47.5. There is a almost 50% chance of rain, and it will be windy, and windy is classified as 15-plus mile-an-hour winds. The Chiefs should demolish the Broncos regardless of wind or not wind. Yeah, except those that injury report don't look pretty. Mm, the Broncos are abysmal, though. But yes. we saw what happens with Kelsey out. They lost to the Lions, and the Lions are a superior team to the Broncos, I would say. I'm still not. I am punishing myself from a Thursday night game after my risk last week. I agree with that 100%. I am staying away for the Thursday bit alone. I I was tempted to take this. I think 
The Chiefs should dominate the Broncos. Kelsey being out. <coughs> oh, Jesus, I just died. Kelsey being out. Dude and needs, Dude needs a dose of Mr. Pfizer. Right? Kelsey being out, minus 10 and a half on a Thursday. Just, I don't like it. He's questionable, right? He's not out. He's questionable, yeah. I just read tonight. I thought he was out. He might. Let me check. It may have it may have updated. It's very possible. Um, Jim, do we need to buy you like the Mr. Pfizer jersey, which apparently is a thing? No, I'm good. Okay. I'm not getting into that. It is you, questionable still. You're right. Okay. I, w- I mean, I just, it could have changed. I don't know. Um, we could get you on the debate with Pat McAfee, Anthony Fauci, RFK Jr., Aaron Rodgers, Jim. We can we can try to make that happen. Muff, I don't think the betting show is a place where we need to get into it, but you can hear us get into it on <laughs> Sunday, where I intend to definitely make this a topic of discussion. Okay. All right. Yeah, I'm staying away as well, which brings us into Sunday morning football in London Town. Ravens taking on the Titans. Titans officially the home team, but neither of them are at home. The Ravens favored by four over under 41 points. The Ravens are without most of their defensive backfield. Yeah. And the Titans are without, I think, a lot of people that have been questionable for weeks now. Both are traveling to London, and I'm staying away because they're both traveling. Gun to my head, I would lean towards the Titans with the points because they've been there, what, a week? Right? No, that was the Bills. So they both are getting there, right? Yeah. Ooh. I'd still lean towards the Titans with the points if I had to put a gun to my head. That's fair. I mean, based on the Ravens' performance last week against the yeah. Steelers, I can very much understand that. Um, but, I, again, because they're both traveling this distance, I'm going to stay away from everything. Fair enough. I'm not touching this. Alex is also out. Next, we have the 49ers traveling to Cleveland. The 49ers favored by six and a half, over under 37 and a half. Chance of rain, wind, which is, I think, most of the Midwest over the weekend is going to have some of these chances. Um, 49ers, really, only Mitchell at running back is questionable. That is something new. The Browns, uh, potentially without Deshaun Watson as well as Miles Garrett. Um, David Njoku is still questionable from his household incident. I, yeah. <laughs> Just saying. Um, I am going to take the 49ers to cover. I, I, I'm just going to keep riding this train. Yeah. In this situation, I 100% agree with you. 100%. So this is one of those take them till they buck you. And yeah. Especially, this, or if there's like a major injury, like if Christian McCaffrey gets hurt, then yes. maybe I'll reconsider. That's definitely this may be one of those increase the units situations, and it's an Ohio bet, so I'm guessing I'm probably going to get a profit boost in this situation. So I probably won't lay the money down until closer to game time. You should be aware of that profit boost as early as Friday. Hey, really? You think I get them on Friday for the whole weekend? All right. Well, I'll be looking. I'm not putting it on there tonight. I'll tell you that much. No, you can wait. You can wait on it. Yeah. Next, we have the Commanders traveling to Hotland to take on the Falcons. Falcons favored by two and a half over to 42 and a half. Uh, Falcons are pretty, pretty injury resistant so far this year. Yeah. Yeah. Now, and I don't think there's anybody for the Commanders that makes me like raise my eyebrows that aren't okay. playing. This is too late, by of teams for me to feel good about this one. What was the word you used? Labile. Volatile. Labile is also a word like that. It goes up and down. Volatile. Also a word that you can use in that situation. I, I'm proud of you for just busting it out. That was yeah. well done. I was using context clues to try to define it for myself and apparently I did gotcha. okay. I got you. Yep. I don't know if I've ever heard that word. Is that a medical term? Labile, yeah, like blood pressure is labile, like it's going up and down. Really high. Could we not just use fluctuating? We could. Both of these teams' performances are often fluctuating, and therefore I do not feel comfortable placing my currencies on them. Remember our audience, Alex. Remember, I understand you're the medical degenerate, and that's on brand, but (sighs) you have to dumb it down for the people. Wow, Ma, why you gotta speak? It's almost like you're gonna call them burger flippers. I mean, you're one step away. 
<laughs> He's garbage. <laughs> Boo his ass. Boo his ass. Here we go. Yeah, I'm staying away. Staying yeah, away from too. this game for, for the reasons Alex said and whatever words Alex wants to use. Panthers at Dolphins. Dolphins favored by 13 and a half over under 48 and a half. It's going to be 88 degrees with a chance of thunderstorms. Oh, I know the Dolphins sh- should win by two touchdowns, but with any kind of chance of thunderstorms could hurt their throwing. So I'm not going to, I won't be playing along. I'm also going to to stay away uh, for reference. Jeff Wilson, Jr. Jeffrey Wilson, Jr. Is likely to play for Miami. He's coming off the IR, which is good because Devon Achan is out. Went on the IR. It's going to be out for at least four weeks. I'm not messing with this game. You know who else is questionable? Chase Claypool. He's fast. Yeah, not on that team. That's what Mike McDaniel said about him. Compared to his teammates, he's not fast. I agree. I agree. You guys yeah. are bitter. Sorry, compared to Tyree Kill and Jalen Waddle, Chase Claypool is not fast. I got to imagine that if you – got a chicago fan on here they're probably not too happy about him either jim it seems to be wherever he goes this is a sentiment yins or not yins period Let's go we're staying away speaking vikings of chicago bears. vikings traveling to chicago to take on the bears vikings favored by two and a half over to 44 and a half uh 45 percent chance of rain again midwest gonna have chances of rain as well as wind the Vikings are going to be without the services of Justin Jefferson as he was placed on the IR this week. Uh, Jordan Addison is also questionable in their wide receiver core. The Bears will still be without Khalil Herbert at running back. Uh, Cole Komet at tight end is questionable, as well as Equinemius St. Brown at wide receiver and backup running back Johnson for the Bears. A lot going on. The Bears are obviously coming off a win against the commanders vikings have a lot of things going on including what will come of kirk cousins in the next four to five weeks i think with Komet out at the bears and Question. or questionable that makes me worried i would probably not make it a best bet i think the vikings are in tank mode i think they're they're gonna have a sell-off soon I would stay away. Too many variables. Too many variables. I also am staying away. Yeah, I'm staying away. Somebody, there's not many exciting NFL games this week, if I'm being honest. All right. I think that's a fair assessment. I mean, the Steelers aren't playing Alex. We get it. Yeah. But <laughs> even me on. Colts traveling to Duval to take on the Jaguars. Jaguars favored by four and a half over into 46 and a half. Anthony Richardson placed on the IR, likely out at least five, six weeks with a AC joint issue. Good. Maybe that'll slow him the F down. <laughs> Which means it's the Gardner Minshew show in Indianapolis. Jaguars, Zay Jones is still questionable. I'm going to contend last week, if I would have known Zay Jones was playing, I probably would have not taken the Bills. Zay Jones played. Guess what happened for the Jaguars? They won. Mm-hmm. I said many weeks that he is the key to that puzzle and he is questionable again. So I'm staying away until I know that Zay Jones is going to be playing week to week. All right. I still think the Jags, if, if you made me pick, I'd still take the Jags in this situation. In Duval, I like it. If I'm Alex, being honest, you like it? You love it? Want some more of it? I probably Alex, like this Alex guy. is messing with his fantasy team as he's as we're talking. I am. I got nervous, and if I don't do it, whenever I think about it, I'll forget. Um, the how did you know, Jim? I get alerts I on my phone. Someone and added yeah. someone. Uh, the Jags would be my pick here. Okay. Not against it. Doesn't. I just am not confident unless I know about Zay Jones' status. Yeah. No. I that would be my pick. Like I said, I'm just. I'm not hyped about any of these NFL games. Yeah. Honest. Saints traveling to Houston to take on the Texans. Saints favored by one and a half over under 42 and a half. 
Um, Safety May for the Saints is coming back from a suspension. I forget if this was PED related or if it was betting related. Um, <clears throat> Juwan Johnson is questionable for the Saints. In Houston land, their center is doubtful, along with Tank Adele at wide receiver is questionable. And they have a host of other players questionable, but nobody, maybe Griffin is of note. But I'm staying away from this. I want to say Houston, but Alvin Kamara is always three touches away from somehow scoring three touchdowns. Alex, you're ridiculous with this. I just you wanted to piss you off on. again. God damn. Uh, I want to say the Saints here. I have that bias still because I watched the Texans play against the Steelers, but I think that was more the Steelers sucking ass. Um, So I would take the Saints here if I were you someone wanting to bet on this game. I have but no desire to bet on this game. If I gave you minus 100, so even odds mm-hmm. for CJ Stroud to throw an interception, would you take it? No. So you would take him not to throw an interception for even odds? Yes. I'm not going to bet it. I was just curious if where, where you would lean. All right. Fair enough. Next, we have the Seahawks traveling to Cincinnati to take on the Bengals. Bengals favored by three. 45 and a half is the points total. Again, chance of rain and windy. The Bengals had one good week with Jamar Chase. I don't think with rain and wind, uh, they're at a place where I feel confident taking them. It was Gino's birthday this week, so I think I'm going to stay away. Alex is staying away because he doesn't want to bet against Gino in his birthday week. Yep. It's, you know, there's worse reasons, I guess, out there. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm it's also going to be There's always away. the emotional card. Yeah, I'm staying away. I would lean the Bengals, but again, until I can see something two weeks in a row, I don't feel confident. I, uh, yeah, I agree. I agree with that. I've now distracted Jim, and I'm sure Jim is now looking at his fantasy team. Yeah, because now you got me all like, did I miss something? And no, Alex I literally think... just said he's doing it now while we're talking, so he doesn't forget. There's nothing. He's, there's no breaking news. Jam, yeah. I literally, as we were talking about the games, was looking at my players that I had, and then I saw that I needed to make a couple adjustments, and I made them. Which and league is this, Jim? That's what's important. That was the fan. The that game. was ours. Yeah, Jim's in first place. I know. That's why he's getting nervous. I'm making him nervous. He hears footsteps. I'm like oh and four. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, right. In the four o'clock games, we have the Patriots traveling to Vegas to take on the Raiders. Raiders favored by three over under 41 and a half. Patriots just just toss a position out there and they probably have somebody that's out or maybe not playing this week. Um, they've uh, they've lost Christian Gonzalez in the defensive backfield along with their top rusher, Matthew Judon. For the, Gonzalez for the season, Judon for several weeks. Um, most of their wide receiver core is questionable this week as Thornton, Boot, Booty, I forget how you pronounce that name, and maybe Booty, Smith Schuster, and Douglas all questionable with the Raiders. Far less to be concerned. You're Thornton, missing a game. And linebacker is out. For all of these reasons, and because the Patriots seem to be on the downside, Mac Jones may not Ooh. be the answer. Give me the Raiders to cover three, hosting the Patriots. I am glad you did that because I was toying with it previously. And if you like the Raiders, I think I will tell right. you. This this is one of the things that I'm going to say. The Patriots losing key pieces on their defense in the week after there's questions about is Devonte Adams getting enough touches? Yeah. Just get ready for him to have 125 plus yards and at least one touchdown. Yeah, I'm with you. What game are we missing, Jim? No, I found it. I found it. The screen okay. wasn't moving for me. Okay. Jim, thoughts? It's it's a leaner for me. I'll see what the slate okay. does at the end, but I agree with you. I see I see your points. I like them. Okay. Next uh, the next one of uh, next the next game affects my decision, if I'm being honest. Brand new Lions traveling to Tampa Bay to take on the Buccaneers. Lions favored by three. 43 and a half is the points total. There's going to be some wind. The Lions have a pretty substantial injury report. Uh, they're still what without. they did last week. 
They did last week. They did. Jameer Gibbs still is on that injury report along with Amon Ra St. Brown. And one of their defensive backs in branch, a couple of their offensive linemen. Are you trying to help me out this month? I'm not. Buck's questionable. Um, Mike Evans is still questionable. And uh, Neil at their safety is questionable as long as, long as Gadecki at guard for the Bucks. I'm no, I'm staying away from this just for the mere fact of I too many questionable players for the Lions. So Alex, I don't want to hear Muff anymore. Tell me what you think. Oh, I was pretty hardcore on the Lions, and then when I he brings up all the injuries, makes me mildly nervous. I don't know yet. To leaner. See, with you, uh, all right, so were you going to do it before Muff talked? Yes. See, I was going to do it before Muff talked. Too. I mean, these aren't secrets. No, they aren't. It's just different whenever like you talk about it out loud. So the fact remember, that there's like Muff two and, and a half lines. Week last week. I didn't have a good week. But I don't think you guys were in the face of my thoughts in those good weeks. I don't think you guys took anything that I spoke out about. I think you just took games that I was on the fence about. That's not true. That's not true. I definitely rode with you on the UNC. No, no, no. I said you didn't take games that I spoke out about as far as I spoke oh, yeah, against. Yeah, 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 right? Yeah, yeah, you may that's have true. you may have followed me along, but it's not like I was like, that's a bad pick. You guys took picks that I didn't speak ill of a team. That's true. So, and I'm not speaking ill of this. If you were to take the Lions, I'm not going to. And be like he a he problem. spoke out last week about the Lions. I vividly remember because he hit us with the uh, with the guy with a bunch Amon, of initials. Amon Ross St. Brown. Yeah, he hit us with that, and that steered me away last week. I think I'm going to hammer this one. I'm almost more than leaning. I, I'm I'm tripping. Tripping. You tripping. are definitely tripping. He's tripping. He's tripping. He's falling over himself to get on this one. I think I am. His face is going to fall flat on the floor to make this one go down. I think it's going to be it. Hammer it. Yeah. Yeah. Alex? Alex? I know. He said it. He just was there. Are you doing it? what I do? Are you going to take the game? Oh, I don't know yet. <laughs> Next, we have the Cardinals at the Rams. Rams favored by seven over under 48 and a half. Uh, obviously, the Rams have Cooper Cup back in their lineup. For the Cardinals, who's going to be starting at running back? Mm-hmm. James Conner is out. They have somebody they just promoted from the practice squad um, who may be the starter. They On their official depth chart, there's somebody else that's the starter. There is unknowns all over the place there. Um, so uh, I'm going to stay away. Yeah, I, I would love me. to take the Rams at like six or six and a half, but the full touchdown, I'm going to stay away. I hate when games are at seven, too. I just like when that's the line, it just always makes me feel weird. Yeah. Not Jim. doing it. I'm Jim's. staying far the fuck away from this one. Staying away is Jim. Next. Like they were projecting running backs multiple running back from the Cardinals to get a lot of points in fantasy. And I was like, this seems weird. So I'm staying away from this game and the running backs. Right. Well, there are all these running backs that are on nobody's lineups that you're probably seeing, right? Yeah, I just know. It seems yeah. bad. All right. Eagles at the Jets playing at Meadowland. Eagles favored by seven over under 41. Mm, I... Mm. Oh. Jets have looked a little too sneaky for me. Yeah, it's still a Jets defensive situation for me here. Um, at some point, the Eagles. You said this last week too. I know, the, but the Eagles keep winning, right? So I don't want to. St- I don't want to steer anybody away from the Eagles. I'm just. I don't feel confident with the Jets def- with the Eagles offense against the Jets defense right now. And Zach Wilson could luck his way into two touchdown throws to Garrett Wilson. Yep, I'm with I'm with you, and that's why I agree with you. I don't want anything to do with this. Yeah, yeah, that's a fair point. In Sunday night football, we have the Giants traveling to Buffalo to take on the Bills. Bills favored by 14, 
44 and a half is the points line. Rain is likely in New York on Sunday night. 14 is just so freaking high on a NFL. I agree with that. That's why I'm staying away. Right. Daniel Jones is questionable with a neck injury. Saquon Barkley is still out. Darren Waller, also questionable. For yeah, the but Giants. they think he's going to start practicing tomorrow. Right. I have a feeling he's going to make his way. Remember, the Bills just lost Matt Bolano at linebacker for the season. Tredavious White was lost the week before for the season. Granted, they got Vaughn Miller back, but he's I think he's still on a pitch count. Um, if there's a game where the Giants cover, I'm not going to say they win, that they're competitive, it's because the Bills are still figuring out their defensive situation without two of their top defenders. Um, but with Daniel Jones out, I don't even know who their backup is. I'm staying away. Yep. Is it that kid from uh, Washington State or one of those uh, Pac-12 teams? No idea. Hmm. No, I'm staying away. Alex, you're in the same spot. Mm-hmm. Yep. Is that a yes? Yep. And real quick, let me look up the depth chart for the Giants. Beep, 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 beep. It is Tyrod Taylor, Jim. Oh, he was a uh, lung guy. Yeah. <laughs> God. Alex very appropriately did the, the lung thing today. It was a premonition. It was. It was a premonition that proved correct. In Monday Night Football, we have the Cowboys traveling to Los Angeles to take on the Chargers. Cowboys favored by two and a half over in a 50 and a half. Um, and we Alex, get to watch the Chargers game. Yeah. I know. I'm kind of pumped about that. You will. That's amazing for you. Uh, for the Cowboys. Uh, wheeling, feeling. Wheeling, feeling. Unfortunately, CJ Goodwin has been ruled out, I believe, for this season. He's one of their key special teams players from Wheeling. Eckler's talking about coming back. Eckler, I believe, is scheduled to play in this game. I don't know how many snaps, but he's scheduled to play. Um, I don't know. The Cowboys are going to come back pissed off from the 49ers game. I would. I'm staying away. I am also staying away, uh, for similar reasons as Jim, and because I right. This is a game where Dak Prescott, Tony Pollard, and the boys could actually do something. Chargers do not have a solid defense. They could do something, or they could come out just still shell shocked from getting their butts whooped and look stupid again. Do you so, think that happens twice? I think it could with the Cowboys. I think that they're not emotionally strong enough. <laughs> They're not emotionally strong I don't enough. Think they have the emotional fortitude. Is this something that Jerry Jones needs to invest in on in the offseason? Is yeah, emotional fortitude. Emotional training. Yep. Become a better sports psychologist. Yep. All right. I'm staying away. Jim's staying away. Alex? Stay away. Okay. All right. That... I hope they lose now so that I can say weekly they're not emotionally strong enough. Yep. Jim's going to be the Stephen A. Smith of the sports world. I cannot world. wait. <laughs> all right that wraps up the nfl slate which brings us to college football week seven take it away gents the first game of the week that we care about uh, that i wow. care about yeah. <laughs> is wvu traveling to houston in the hashtag beat dana bowl wvu is favored by you made that hashtag i didn't make that hashtag. I just, me i made that hashtag just now WV minus. I don't mind Dana. I do. I don't. Why? What did he do? Then don't. Then don't say it. Like I am allowed to say something. But what did he do? I just want to know. Like, what's the backstory that makes you hate him? Rich Rod. Rich Rod. I get. He's an idiot. What did he do? He's an idiot. Just in general, he's a freaking idiot. You guys are the same people that like that guy who like died on a golf course, though. Bill Stewart did not die on a golf course. He had a heart attack. But what did he, what makes him different from Dana? Because he wasn't an idiot. 
What is the idiot part? Like he's just That's stupid. Like I didn't like him. I don't think he's like. I think he. I think he represents the team poorly. And I didn't like him. I'm allowed to not like him. I didn't say you weren't. I just wanted people to know why like we him. don't like him. Most this, WWE fans don't really like this, him. They would prefer hair? if I had to pick Dana Holgerson or Rich Rod to come back. I'd pick Rich Rod. How about Neil Brown? No, fuck Neil Brown. Actually, well, Dana Holgerson, Neil Brown. <laughs> <laughs> All right, moving on. WB favored by two and a half points over under is 49 and a half. If I was going to take anything on this game, I would take the over 49 and a half. That being said, I don't really like to bet on WB games, so I will be staying away. Should be a good game. Who do you think is going to win? WB. Uh. <laughs> I still don't think you should hate Dana, but it's your choice and I'm going to back it. Okay, I'm allowed. That's what I'm just saying. I think you should hate Rich Rod a lot more. I hate what Rich Rod did. But, but Dana didn't do that. I think Rich Rod's a better football coach. God bless WDU fans. Next game. Next game is Stanford at Colorado. Tune in next week to Mountaineer Radio. Stanford at Colorado. Colorado favored by 11.5 points over under 16.5. Give me the Buffaloes to beat all them smart ass MFers from Stanford. Going back to Boulder, give me Colorado to cover. Play my theme music. I'm not playing in that game. Uh, seems a tad bit high. I no. I like your pick, ma. Not investing. So, real talk here. Have either of you seen the uh, conspiracy theories that Shador Sanders is taking sacks so that he yes. doesn't have to throw the ball and potentially get intercepted or throw incomplete passes? Yep, to pad his stats for the <laughs> yep. week. Yep. Wouldn't freaking surprise me. It was just being honest. You gotta That's... quit. Like, there's another thing. I just. I don't have to quit anything. If anyone has to quit ass. things, it's you, Jim. Like, you live in the realm of need to quit saying that shit. You chap my ass. <laughs> you chap everyone's ass, Jim. That's you, MO, you, is saying things to chap people's ass. You hate this man for no apparent reason. I find him annoying. Period. I'm allowed to. That's an opinion. I find him annoying. Why? Why Shador, do you hate, Wait, Shador, why do you hate, or Dion? Shador or Dion? Why do you hate the Steelers? Why do you hate the Steelers? The fan base is ridiculous. Okay, I find Dion to be ridiculous. Period. Then we're e- completely equal. So what's wrong with Shador? I oh, I find him equally obnoxious. Why? Literally. Because for the same reasons, I find his dad annoying. If anybody, let's be real honest here. Shador this year has probably done more to be annoying to you than Dion. Yes. Then why do you hate Dion? Because Dion hypes it up. He doesn't hype up his son to go stop yes, on the field and his give son. him his Rolexes. <laughs> he wasn't even number one on the best kid list. He hates him. Shut up, Jim. <laughs> he's wondering why he's got a Bentley. He's like, why don't you have a more functional vehicle, Shador? Why am I not allowed to have an opinion? I don't understand. This is you what drives me it. nuts. Well, we're not also allowed to call out that opinion. <laughs> I can't. I'm just calling out every opinion you have for the rest of time. You Ever. should. <laughs> All right. Saturday at noon. We have no. So you're Georgia. not going to take Colorado to cover. No. Number one, Georgia at Vanderbilt. Georgia's favored by 31 and a half points over under 55 and a half. Georgia did come out and lay the hammer down on Kentucky last week. I said that might be when they turn it on or turn it off. They turned it on. Vanderbilt kind of sucks. I think that spread's too high. I just don't really like taking spreads this high or this kind of game. I don't find it as exciting, so I'll probably stay away from it. But I don't think it's a terrible take to take Georgia here. Uh, Ditto. I'm staying away. I don't think it's a terrible take either way. Um, Right? The reason the spread is at 31 and a half is because that's where they want it to be. So you could go either way, and I'd be like, whatever. I mean, well, that's the right. The goal is to get money, as much money on both sides, so they can win on the juice. So they expect people to be on both sides of that line. Yeah, I think it's right. I think it's perfect where it is to get people to bite either way. All right. After that, we will talk about Michigan State at Rutgers. Rutgers minus four and a half over under 39 and a half. <sighs> Rutgers is, I think Rutgers is taking down Michigan State this week. I think they win. I just don't know if four and a half is the number I want to go with. 
I don't I, know if I, I really not, want Mom. to put money on where, where, what early, number but... should it be? I that two I would take that I would take it at. Yeah, two and a half or three. Two and a half for me. I think so. I don't win. I feel like three could. I could see Rutgers winning by a field goal, like a last second field goal. Muff, I'll side bet you a dollar. On what? I'll give Rutgers two and a half. I said that's where I would take it. I didn't say I would hammer it. I, and I'm giving you a side bet. And I'm saying that I'm not going to lock it in. Just because you give me a line that I said is a more reasonable line doesn't mean that's what I'm going to take. I think Jim lives in this world. And, like, people will need to agree with Jim about sports. But, Muff, I'll, I'll, I'm, I'm not saying hammer it in for the best bet. Right, but you're making me bet money against you in a bet that I don't feel confident <laughs> Muff doesn't in. doesn't have to bet you, Jim. He's allowed to not bet you. <laughs> Alex, you realize that you guys do this shit to me all the time. All of a sudden, no, 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 no. You bite on it when we do it. I'm just not biting. <laughs> <laughs> but Alex is like, oh, Jim is such a prick. Yeah. That's my theme music tonight. Well, no, he's calling you a prick because I said no, and you said bah. When we, you just don't say no, so we just keep talking about it, and you talk yourself into it. That's the difference. But Muff, you said that the line that you would like is two and a half to three. Right, I would like it. Doesn't mean I love it. I'm giving it to you. I, I don't love it, so I'm not going to take it. Okay, so you don't think Rutgers will win? No, if you're a gun to my head, as you would say, yes, I think Rutgers wins. But there's not a gun to my head, and I'm not being forced to do anything, so okay. I'm not. I'm staying away. Fair enough. Fair enough. Is it fair? You yeah, I think it's fair. I'm not upset. Alex is upset, but I am. Alex not is upset. upset at you. <laughs> no, I'm just taking it all in. Go ahead, Next. Alex. Keep it rolling. Arkansas travels to Alabama, number eleven, Alabama. Alabama is favored by twenty and a half points over under forty six and a half. Seems like a low total. Well, yeah, Bama's not necessarily knocking it out of the park offensively right now. Right. Jason Lauren. No. Jalen Monroe. Jamil Rowe. Jalen Milrow. Um, what's well, projecting a 28, well, no, a 35, no. Yeah, 35 to like 15, 14 game, that range. Okay. I guess 32, 32 14, for, somewhere not like that. It's not as bad, but. Yeah. All right. I'm not going to take anything in it, but. Yeah, I mean, you're staying away. Jim, anything? I'm staying away. All right. Next, Syracuse at Florida State, number four, Florida State. Florida State favored by 17 and a half points over under 56 and a half. Ugh. Right. Syracuse screwed me last week, so I'm staying away from anything Syracuse, Syracuse related. Syracuse. And Florida yeah. State, who knows? Yeah. No. Yeah. It depends on what Florida State shows up. Next, we have number three, Ohio State traveling to take on Purdue. Ohio State's favored by 19 and a half points over under 49 and a half. What be the temperature from Columbus, Jim? Ohio State covers. I think. I was putting something on Muff's head in the sky. Yeah. Is it falling? Was, well, it's not falling in Pennsylvania, but if I were to go about 20 minutes west, I may find different different situation. No, not in 20 minutes west. 20 minutes west is still okay. You gotta remember, it only falls in the center of the state. Okay. Gotcha. <laughs> it like caves, it caves in. Yeah. It's, in a the outsides. it's like a crater. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I would say they cover. I think there's great fear that it is in Purdue. Yeah. It, Purdue's caught us a couple times. So they come in fired up. They but I would us. say right. that well, it's it, right, it's the down week before a big game. Yeah. So are they looking ahead? It's away. Yeah. It's a noon kickoff, right? There's a lot of little things that can add up to it being more competitive than it should be. Yeah. But I would still I would still say exactly 20 points. Okay. And Ryan Day has made it very clear that if he has the chance to cover, he's going to cover. Has he made that very clear? It, like last what, week's what, what game. Words? Last week's game made it very evident He's going to cover. Right. Okay. The, the legitimate question to ask. Do we think that college football coaches yeah. think about that when they think about what used to be referred to as the style points? Yes. If I cover, that's like having the style points. Yes. 
I was just curious if we really think that that's a thing. Absolutely. Well, like the eyeball test, like how do you, how big do you win? And because it used to just be. More... I think that the percentage, the margin of victory is a thing when I hear big, big noon kickoff, use that as how they stack ranked mm-hmm. Michigan, Penn State, and Ohio State. Oh, yeah. I mean, margin of victory definitely comes into things in college football. And I, when I see the, each one of those kick game day and big noon kickoff have a whole betting specialist come on. Yeah. I think the spread is now the style points. It's bear, right? Bears on Fox now. Bears mm-hmm. on Fox and a bear knockoff is on game day. Right. And he's not doing well at all. <laughs> he's not bear. He's so bad. So bear, right. I read the Kirk Herb street book. Yeah. And they taught, he actually talks a lot about bear and about how he came to know bear bears, apparently just the ultimate horse betting degenerate. <laughs> like I'm not surprised bets on every horse race he can find goes to the Kentucky Derby and just goes off. Like I'm hilarious to hear Kirk, hear Kirk talk about it. He's like, he's, he's a really good better. But there's one thing that gets him and that's the ponies. I picture bear a lot like you in my life. Like knows all the analytical bullshit, knows all the stuff, and like is a normal guy, but like has that one vice and like has a secret honey hole of cash. And you're just like, where? And you're just like I probably shouldn't spill all the tea on a podcast, but like when I first met Muff, I remember walking into into his room where there was a computer and I was like, Muff, what do you do with this? Oh, I I I play online poker. I was like, "Wow, Muff!" And like he was, Muff was good at online poker. Like Muff is that guy. He's the bear of, of my life. <laughs> so I I could see him betting on the ponies. Do you bet on the ponies, Muff? No, I have only ever placed one horse racing bet. Or phrase mm-hmm. I placed maybe two. Like I think one year on a Kentucky Derby, just because it was like the first year that the sports betting apps were out, and I was like, "Oh, yeah. I get, this is fun." Um, and then once recently, because FanDuel offered a promotion of one risk free bet, and I put it on there and I ended up winning, but I just bet the favorite. Nice. Like I, yeah, I didn't, I did not do anything, any research. I was like, ah, oh, we're just going to put $20 on the favorite because it's a free bet. Gotcha. Cool. All, All right. right, Alex. Next game, we have Indiana traveling to number two, Michigan. Michigan favored by 33 and a half points over under 45 and a half. I should take Michigan. I'm not going to. I think we're just in the part in the season where many of these teams are playing the lesser teams in the Big Ten, right in the middle before the big ones. And it's like, well, maybe we only win by four touchdowns this week. Uh, Here's the story for me. If Michigan is true blue Michigan, it will be a freaking bloodbath. Yeah, It'll be awful. And the only way they don't hit is if Indiana like decides to come out and like put on a dog fight. Mm-hmm. They'll score some points and make it like a twenty-eight point game, and that'll bust some some betters. But I saw Indiana in that Ohio State game. I've seen Indiana against some other teams. I don't think they got it in them. So I think this is going to be a murder fest. And I, but I can't put money on Michigan. I just can't bring myself to do yeah. it. Like I said, I want to, I'm just going to, I'm just going to stay away. I am as well. And find better spots to, to bet Michigan. Next yeah. we have California traveling to number 16, Utah, Utah minus 11 and a half over under 45 and a half. Nobody knows. I, you can ask the question. Nobody knows. Yeah. No, one knows. I don't think he is. Right. If well, I could bet it, I would say he's not. I, I would and I would be on the same side as you. Because of the spread, I think people know now. Yeah. So we'll just move on. I <laughs> actually think his knee was so screwed up, like Henry, Henderson Hooker from Tennessee, that this has been a ploy the whole time. I think maybe if they were doing really, really well, he would come back, but I don't think mm. he's gonna risk it for this season. I don't think he could. I think he honestly blew his knee out so bad that this has been a decoy thing the whole time. I don't know, but 
Next, we have Florida traveling to South Carolina to take on the Gamecocks. South Carolina favored by two and a half points over under 51 and a half. Got South Carolina, which leads me to want to do that. Florida's I no idea. Just no idea what's happening in Florida week to week. So, so I'm going to stay away. I me love too. this. I want to lean, lean South Carolina so bad. It's not in the swamp. Do it. What's Florida's record? Have they only lost one? I they lost know. to Utah. We know that. Did they lose they to have, Duke? I think, I think they have two. I think they have two losses. Oh God, that makes it so much more fun. What that they have two losses? Yeah, because then I'm cheering for a three loss, and that would be. Yeah, they're four and two. They lost to Kentucky. Yeah. I'm gonna. So wait, who was the other loss to? Utah. Week one. What? Oh. I'm gonna hard lean that. All right. Next, we have Muffs game, Massachusetts at number six, Penn State. Penn State minus forty one and a half, over under fifty four and a half. Muff. Penn State's probably up 28, 30 points at the end of the first half. But knowing that they're playing Ohio State next week, that means that a lot of the starters are probably not going to be in there the second half. Yeah. If they are, James Franklin, I'm going back to he's a moron. But right now he's a genius, so I'm not messing with him. But if so, he's still got his starters in and they're up 30, moron. Agreed. So He doesn't need the style points. Not in this game. He's beat every team by, what, double digits? They've covered every game, right? And I guess you have that, like, to. And I know where this is the betting show, but, like, if you're him and they're, the pundits are stack ranking you based on the fact you've beat the shit and covered everybody all season, do you keep that going if you're the coach? Right. I don't. So I'm not worried about how many points they score in this game. I'm worried about how many points they give up. Right. Is this if the starting offense goes out there and scores 28, 35 points in the first half and Massachusetts has zero or three points? All I care about is that they score three to 10 points total for the entire game. And as long as they Penn State scores at least 35, and I'm like, fine, whatever. So do you keep the starting defense out? They'll probably pull some of the key players, like some of their their big, big DNs and some of their uh, big linebackers. Um, they'll probably start pulling them out. That would be my guess in the second half, especially if they're up by four plus touchdowns. But I mean, they're probably going to keep some of those starters in there, but not all of them. Because like the you said, playoff... this isn't a team that's going to need style points in the end against Massachusetts. They're right. either going to win big games right. or not. Right. But the playoff committee, when they go to, I don't think they're going to care about this game. You don't think so? No, I think they're going to say they took their starters out in the second half, and that's why they didn't cover because they were looking forward to the Penn State game. I hope so. Or the right. Ohio State game. Because ultimately, if I, if Penn State were to beat Ohio State and they need to have that resume fodder, I, I hope the morons don't go. Well, they let Massachusetts score 14 points. No, right. That would piss me off. So right. Pe- Penn State's potential style wins and style points are against Ohio State and Michigan. Okay. Mm-hmm. If they do what they got to do there, then yeah. it doesn't matter what they did against Massachusetts. Exactly. I'm cool with that. I'm cool with that. All right. Next, we have a big matchup in number eight, Oregon, at number seven, Washington. Washington minus two and a half, over under 67 and a half. The battle for Pac-2 supremacy. And neither of these teams are part of the Pac-2. What will be the Pac-2? That being said, I'm just cheering for a bucket full of points this week. Give me the over. I'm I'm just going to try to speak it into existence because that's what I want to see. It's fair. I'm staying away. I'm rooting for Washington here. I like Washington, but I'm going to stay away from the situation. Why? Why do you root for Washington? I just like Washington, period. I like Washington. I like Penix as a Heisman candidate, yeah. right? Yes, exactly. And what, I, like he- I like Penix as a Heisman candidate because I don't like Caleb Williams as the Heisman front runner this year. Yes. What about Bo Nix? Why do we not like Bo Nix? Because well, he's a- he- he can outperform in this game and put his name ahead of Penix. A 35-year-old man at this point. Right? <laughs> Which is also true. I I just like All right. Number 23, Kansas traveling to Oklahoma State. Kansas is favored by three and a half points over under 55 and a half. Hammer me home on Kansas. I will ride that horse till it bucks me. <laughs> Kansas, Kansas. I was curious. Kansas. I'm going to stay away from this one. They're traveling. I don't like that they're traveling this week. I think Kansas is the far superior team of the two. 
I feel confident that Kansas wins by a touchdown. All right. I, I like your confidence. Next, we have Texas A&M traveling to number 19, Tennessee. Tennessee is favored by three points over under 55 and a half. I would rather take Texas A&M it gun to my head here, just because I think Tennessee has a tendency to blow games that they should win. I would they, rather flip the light for this yeah, one. No idea. I, don't, I mean, I'm not going to take either, but if I had to yeah. pick, pick Texas A&M. Any other? No, I really have no, no nothing to offer in this no, one. No, thank you. Did anyone put this game? Want to lead the conversation? I did. Wake Forest at Virginia Tech. Virginia Tech favored by one and a half, over under 47 and a half. I put this in here because I'm leaning Wake Forest, like maybe even to go money line. Yeah, Virginia Tech is not very good, so I wouldn't fault you for that. Like, give me one second here. I put this in here, right? Uh-oh. Wake Forest just lost by five to Clemson. Ipso facto, Clemson would, in my mind, clobber Virginia Tech. I understand it's at Virginia Tech, but it's not a night game. No. You're not entering Sandman at night. Give mm. me Wake Forest, and I'm just going to go money line, boys. Mm. I'm going to go money what line. That I'm not even going to take, take the point and a half. Just give me the money line. Jim, do you know what that makes that pick? Money line dog. Yep. Bingo. Yeah, I just s- screw Virginia Tech. And I don't find that to be risky. <laughs> well, the sports books do, Jim. All right. Muffs taking a money line dog. As a best bet. Is that the first time this year anybody's done that? Might be. You know what, Muff? I'll go with you. Wait. Okay, Georgia Tech. Never mind. I was thinking, is that an issue for Jim? No, no, no. (laughs) It's not Georgia Tech. Next, we have... Sorry. No, you're good. I forgot he's not allowed to bet Georgia Tech. Next, we have Iowa going to Wisconsin. Wisconsin's favored by 10 points. The over-under is set at a measly 34.5 points. I like Iowa in this game. I think I could see it being like 17 to 10. I don't want anything to do with that. Um, so right, Iowa, new quarterback. Cade McNamara's out for the season. They I think had some success last week. Yeah, I I I'm not gonna yeah. You know what? Go ahead, Alex. You, I'm gonna I am probably gonna ride it. You and Gus Johnson can be friends in the afterlife. Don't tell him how to live. He'll get mad at you. If you want to, you can have like... You a... didn't tell me how to live. You just told me my opinions were wrong. Yeah, I did. Yeah. You could, you can, if you want, Alex, for, for your birthday, I'll get you a nice Iowa Hawkeye lapel pin. Oh, fancy. You and Gus Johnson will be friends. We have number 14, Louisville, traveling to Eat Shit Pit. Louisville is favored by seven and a half points over under 44 and a half. Well, don't touch my picks. Louisville should, should stomp Pittsburgh. That's not me being a WVU homer. That's saying Pitt's not very good. Louisville has proved themselves to be good. They just beat Notre Dame by more than seven and a half points. Notre Dame's a better team than Pitt. So they should win. They should. But that being said, are just, they burnt you out? Played, you said the A plus B equals C situation. Exactly. That being said, are they tired from the big win at Notre Dame? I don't think I'm going to ride with it, but I did lean Louisville. I just have some other picks I think I like better. Yeah, that's fine. Right. Fair. All right. Pittsburgh, I mean, one of the things like Pittsburgh, their quarterback is now a tight end. Happens. I, don't, I don't know who their other quarterback is. <laughs> Happens. Mm-hmm. Into some night games starting around seven o'clock. We have Auburn at number 22, LSU, LSU in the swamp favored by 11 and a half points over under 60 and a half. Jaden, Jaden Daniels, Jalen Daniels, definitely Daniels. I forget if it's Jalen or Jaden might be one of those sleepy picks, not for the Heisman, but that has like this weird uh, Al Davis draft grade coming into the year. <laughs> Like next year, like, ah, uh, it's like a Jamarcus Russell situation. Yeah, like I feel like he's that type of player, and he could show out for the rest of the season. And this might be one of those games because they're playing Auburn, who's not very good. But I'm gonna stay away. Yeah, me too. Screw this game. Next, we have the other West Virginia team, Marshall, traveling to Georgia State. Georgia State's favored the by. Other? Okay, WVU's on a winning streak, so they're the other West Virginia team now. Mm-hmm. 
They are oh. okay. If Marshall, if I said Marshall was a West Virginia team and I talked about WU second, they would be the other West Virginia team. There if are Marshall, two, is Marshall the West Virginia division team? one? No, there, there are two division one West Virginia teams, one and the other. It doesn't matter. I feel like they're interchangeable. That was not some mysterious allusion to a feeling. That was just saying another West Virginia team. You said you the other said though. Another. Okay, so how about we'll say another West Virginia team? Is is WVU the West well, Virginia team then? Yes, they are West Virginia University. So yes. Are they the they are. West Virginia University? Yes, they are. Yeah, they are. Sue me. <laughs> well, Ohio State might. Marshall at Georgia State. Georgia State minus one and a half, over under 54 and a half. I don't Alex, what do you know? Because I know nothing. Marshall hasn't disappointed yet. Well, that's not true because they disappointed me last week. Wow, they're winning. <laughs> they didn't. They, they didn't. They lost to NC State they when they they got they came back. Have. They looked good versus NC. They State did. First half, which is why exactly, I'm going to take them. It's exactly what I told you though. I'm going that to was take two them. Different levels of team, and I'm going to take them as a money line dog. Okay. You're Jesus. Oh, never mind. I thought it was 11 and a half. I feel a whole much better about what you just did now. Yeah. I literally thought it was 11 and a half. I was like, oh my God, Jim, let's talk I'm, about this for a second. I'm thinking I'm probably, I might take Marshall plus one and a half. I'm proud that Jim knew that was Moneyline Dog. Yeah. <laughs> because it's not it's, risky. Celebrate. It's, small Jim, it is still by definition hey, a Moneyline Dog. How I, how it computes in my brain doesn't have to compute the same way in yours. All but right. Jim, if we're going to talk about Remind this, yourself that. Yes. Arizona you at have number to, nine. You still have to say it properly. It's a money line dog. Arizona at risky. Arizona at number 19, Washington State. Washington State minus eight and a half over under 59 and a half. Give me the Cougs to cover. Now, I don't know why you're doing that, but I'm going to let you go. Give me the Cougs to cover. I don't hate it. I took them last week. It burnt me, but I took them. I think it's high. Number 10, USC travels to number 21, Notre Dame. Notre Dame minus two and a half over under 60 and a half. I lean USC here, but it might be recency bias. Right, USC is going to play a defense. Yeah. And they're going to play a team that can run the ball down there for the entire game. Yeah. Uh, This could go over. Would probably be, if I'm going to do anything. I I don't think Notre Dame has the defense to go, or the offense to go over. They don't need to throw the ball then, Jim, they can run it down USC's throat. Have you seen USC's defense? Swiss cheese is giving them credit. Yeah. 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 USC, we know, can throw the ball over the field. Notre Dame, the only reason it doesn't go over my mind is because Notre Dame literally can... How many points does each team have to have for it to hit, you think? They're projecting like a 31 to 28 game. I don't see that. I just I don't see that. I'm not betting it. I'm just saying I would I would lean that direction. All right. Another battle of the ranked matchups. We have number 25 Miami at number 12 UNC. UNC is favored by three and a half over under 57 and a half. Is Miami going to come, come out pissed? Or are they just going to come out like they don't care anymore? I have no idea. Exactly. I'm going to stay away. Yeah. And then what agree. UNC shows up? Because UNC should have you know, been decent and looked better against Syracuse last week. And I don't feel like they they look good. They still haven't lost. Well, no, UNC didn't look bad last week. But I think they should look better. I think they covered. Yeah, if I had... The over just didn't hit. If I I had to take something here, I'd take UNC. Jim, they won 40-7. to Oh, yeah, my fault. I was thinking about the other North Carolina game. My fault. Yes, okay. you're correct. I take all that shit back. That's my fault. Right. Yeah, you're right. I still not because I don't know what Miami's going to show up. I agree. Next, we have Missouri traveling to number 24, Kentucky. Kentucky's favored by two and a half points over under 51 and a half. Right, Kentucky just got the doors beat in. I know. But it was to Georgia. Georgia finally played up to the potential we expected. Um, I would lean Kentucky to cover. At home, yeah. No, I'd probably lean. Yeah, to, like, Alex, at, didn't you have that on your card at one I point did. the other way? Yeah, that's what I was just saying. I, I have, I would lean Missouri to cover. Thinking about it with Kentucky being at home, I just had it on there as something I was toying with mentally. I don't think I'm going to take it. 
too close to call, I think. Yeah. All right. Next, we have number 18, UCLA, at number 15, Oregon State. Oregon State, minus 3.5, over under 53.5. UCLA burnt me last week. I like Oregon State, though. It's at Oregon State. Oregon Mm -hmm. State is the rushing attack of those teams. Uh, Yeah, I would lean Oregon State. I don't like the three and a half. Yeah, I don't know. That's a lean for me. NC State at number 17, Duke. Duke minus three and a half, over Mm. under 45 and a half. I like Duke here. I think Duke can win by a touchdown. I agree. Not gonna not gonna tell you, but I will I give you the confidence to do it. Yeah, I'm leaning that way too. Yeah. I'm gonna I think that one's gonna make it onto my card. And then whoever put the last game on, you have a comment? I put that on there for you. San oh. Diego State <laughs> is a damn good team. And it's the Hawaii game. Well, if I'm up at nine forty five and feeling risky to bet, I'm probably gonna lean San Diego State on this one. If and, you do, will you text me? Yes, and then Hawaii <laughs> will freaking win. Wait, you said, wait, I need you to qualify this. San Diego State is a damn good team. Yeah, I think they're... I think At they're two team. and four. I think they're a damn good team. At two and four. Yes, I believe so, Mom. They just lost 49 you know to what? 10. If he just believes so and he's not going to give us reasons, I'm going to accept his opinion. Yeah, he should because... 49 to 10 to the Air Force. <laughs> also a damn good team. <laughs> America. You're right, Buff, okay? <laughs> just, yeah, you're happy. I just wanted to make sure that... They've lost to UCLA. He likes their helmets. They've lost to Oregon State. Okay? Okay. They lost to Boise Excellent State, teams. and they lost to Air Force. It, those are two rough ones. They shouldn't have lost. Okay? All right. <laughs> Dear Lord. Alex, if you bet that, let me know. I'll let you know. Uh, it brings us to our special. Wait, are we going over our cards first? Yeah, go over the cards first. All right. I feel bets. good about mine, so I'm just going to rip it go off. Have at it. I'm going to take the 49ers minus six and a half of the Browns, the Raiders minus three versus the Patriots, Kansas minus three and a half at Oklahoma State, Iowa plus 10 at Wisconsin, Marshall plus one and a half at Georgia State, and Duke minus three and a half versus NC State. That's what I'm doing. Six total games for Alex. Jim yep. is looking like he's going for the octuplet. I don't know. I'm debating it. You go ahead, Buff. All right. I, first, in the college football world, I'm going to take Colorado to cover 11 and a half hosting the nerds from Stanford. I'm going to take Oregon, Washington, over 67 and a half in the West Coast shootout, followed by Wake Forest, Moneyline Dog traveling to Virginia Tech. Washington State to cover eight and a half, hosting the Wildcats of Arizona. And in the NFL, I'm going to take the 49ers to cover six and a half, traveling to the garbage pit of America, Cleveland, followed by the Raiders to cover three, hosting Billy Bell's spiraling Patriots. Oh, hell. Do I ride with eight? It's a personal decision. Alex, do I ride with eight? If you feel confident about eight, do it. You got some catching up to do. That's true. So I'm going to take in the NFL, the 49ers minus six and a half at the Browns, the Lions minus three at the Buccaneers, the Raiders minus three versus the Patriots. In college football, I'm taking Wake Forest money line at Virginia Tech. I'm taking South Carolina minus two and a half at Florida. Marshall money line at Georgia State. I'm taking Duke. I think that's minus three and a half uh, against NC State. And UNC minus three and a half at Miami. You know what I found out about Jim, Alex? Hmm. Is one day, next week maybe, I'm going to not put my picks in to to the sheet before Jim starts thinking about it. Because there is one pick this week that I had in there to start that Jim was talked about that he was going to bet it. And then as soon as I took it off, he just stopped talking about it. What? 
It was in the NFL. It was the Ravens game. I said I was going to bet it? You said you're going to bet the Titans because I had it in there. And then I didn't talk about betting it. Not intentionally. I just was like, eh, I'm rethinking this. And then as soon as I didn't bet it, you took it off your card. I didn't, you didn't have that in there. I did. I, okay. I don't I was, think that's the case, but I'm going to go. Pay, okay. I was paying attention. All, All right. right. Jim has eight games. Alex is riding with six and I've got, Six as well, which brings us into uh, the Mike All Stop Hit Stick Pick of the Week. Pow, pow, pow. Do we have any team rides here? 49ers team ride. Any other team rides? I feel good about that as a team ride, to be honest. Yeah, me too. We have the Raiders as well. I feel better about 49ers. Me too. All right. Let it be written. The 49ers minus six and a half traveling to Cleveland is the Hit okay. Stick Pick of the Week. Pow, 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 pow. Next, we have the Midwest Mobster Risky Pick of the Week. Get out of here. We have two different Moneyline dogs in the best bets with Wake yeah. Forest and Marshall. I'm okay with either of them. Jim said Wake Forest. That's the only game I have of that variety, so that, of course I'm going to put that up. That's fine. I'm okay yeah, with, I agree that. with that. I don't have it as the best bet, but I'm okay with it as the Risky Pick. Because you two both have Marshall, that's why I'm asking. Not yes. money line, but all right. The Midwest Mobster Risky Pick of the Week is Wake Forest Moneyline Dog traveling to Virginia Tech. And lastly, the Lilita Whale of a Parlay, <laughs> of which I am banished this week, will include the 49ers minus six and a half at the Browns as the hit stick pick, followed by Jim and Alex's picks. I hate that we banish someone. Well, it's just not. Let's bring him back in. Well, no, we have to do it at least for two or three weeks, okay. right? We can't, we can't yeah. just do it once and then okay. stop. The only reason I, I just, I don't get the same satisfaction. Well, again, it gives it a better chance to win, and maybe okay. once it wins once, maybe we'll, we'll ride that momentum. Okay, mm. all right, whatever you say. So, who's gonna go, me or you, Alex? You can um, go. I think if we're gonna follow the. Uh, these are loose quote unquote rules. Alex has been a mainstay, so typically that person's been able to pick first. Go ahead, Alex. Give me. Hmm. I'm torn between Kansas and Iowa. You rode Kansas last week. I know. I think I'm gonna ride Kansas again. Kansas minus three and a half. At Oklahoma State. I'm going to take Detroit minus three and a half to the Buccaneers. Minus three. Minus three, I'm sorry. Unless the line has changed and you two want to confirm that now. No, no. <laughs> we better confirm our lines though. Alex. That would be that would be actually be to your disadvantage in this case. Whereas the other time it was to your yeah, advantage. Because we would still technically they would pay you out, but not as much. Better confirm them lines, Alex. Shit. All right, the Lolita Whale of a parlay is the 49ers to cover six and a half traveling to Cleveland, Kansas minus three and a half traveling to Oklahoma State, and the Lions minus three traveling to Tampa Bay. You all have road favorites in the Whale of a parlay this week. There we go. Ooh, we did it. There's we a profit it. boost on the Oregon Washington game with Fandle. Fandle? Fandle. Fandle with Fandle, Fandle, Fandle. Fandle. All right, right, everybody. That wraps up this week's episode of Sports Stuff, Betting Stuff. Remember, you can follow us at Sports Jim Muff on Instagram and Twitter. Sports Stuff, W forward slash Jim Amber Sam Muff on Facebook, on YouTube. Subscribe, comment, rate, review. Get the bell on. Poke ding, like ding. and tickle. And as a reminder, we have a social media contest this week. Comment, share, hashtag FanDuel, FanDuel Sportsbook. Anything FanDuel related in the comments as part of the share, and you will be entered into a chance to win three chances at five dollar bills from Du Bois, your favorite degenerates. There will be a payday for sure for you. A what? A payday. 